If you are new to Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, you might have a tendency like I did and just jump in with both feet and just start editing your photos, moving those sliders around to you work out what you like and what you dislike. The problem with that is you might overlook a really important tool. So today I'll share with you a tool that you should not ignore that will get you better looking colors, a more realistic contrast, as well as it can even fix your white balance. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, if you're new to photography or just new to editing in Lightroom, there might be a tool that you've already overlooked, and that is the histogram. And a histogram is an incredibly helpful tool. Now, I'm sure most of you guys know what a histogram does, but just as a recap, histogram is basically a graph to show you how many pixels or a specific exposure are within your photo. And it's split into five sections. You've got your whites, highlights, midtones, shadows, and blacks. And it's a really good way to see if your photo is either under, correctly, or overexposed. And actually, we can use it in Lightroom to better expose for our photo, but it's also got a really handy trick of showing you if you've got the right white balance in your photo. And I'm gonna be editing two photos today to show you how you can use the histogram in your image. So let's take this photo here. It's a photo I took last year in Zion National Park. Now, what we do, have a look at the overall photo we can clearly see that although we've exposed for the sky, most of the image is underexposed. How can we use the histogram to better expose this image? Okay, so let's black out the photo and just look at the histogram in the top right hand corner. We can see that most of the information is found in the dark tones, although there's a little bit of information in the highlights, we wanna make sure that we're not clipping. Clipping, if you didn't know, is basically pushing your photo too far, so there's no information either in the highlights or blacks, and it's something you do want to avoid in your images. So how can we do that? Well, let's go ahead, block out the image. What we're gonna do is let's go to the highlights first, bring those down just a little bit. And with our shadows here, the shadow slider, what we can do is actually target those specifically and bring those further up. And as you can see, we're bringing more information up in that area. So we can see instead of it all being very tightly packed in the left-hand side, we're bringing it out a little bit more. Now what we can do to have a little bit more information in the blacks and a little bit more information in the whites, what we can do is go to our sliders here and target those specifically, bringing those up a little bit, and bringing those down. Now, I still think this block is a little bit too far over to the left. So what we could do is actually go to our exposure here and bring that up overall. But again, we can see on the highlights here, we wanna make sure that we're not clipping it. So we wanna make sure we don't bring it up too much. We're gonna go for something like so. Then what we can do is actually go into contrast here and bring that out. And you can see what we do is stretching it out a little bit further. And now if we unblock the photo, it looks really, really good. And all we've done is we've just looked at the exposure to get a better overall outcome. But we don't just have to use it for exposure. It's really handy for finding the right white balance in your image. So let's move over to photo two. And as you can see, it's a stately home uh, photo that I've recently taken, but you can clearly see it's running a little bit warm. Now, if we actually have a look at the histogram, we can see that it's not just displaying this white color, you've also got three other colors in our histogram as well. And that is showing our three channels within our image. Now, I'm sure you all know that all photos, screens, sensors, they all work capturing three primary colors, red, green, and blue. And the balance of those colors create all the colors you can see in the color spectrum. And that is what the histogram is showing us. It's showing us the brightness of the reds, greens, and blues. And to find the right white balance is to find the right balance of those three primary colors, because that's what creates the rest of the colors in the color spectrum. Now, if we have a look here, you can see that I was shooting manual white balance, 6,000 Kelvin. I wanted to shoot naturally a little bit warm. But if we wanted to find the right balance, the quick trick that we want to do is you see these really, really tall three peaks, one in the blue, one in the green, and one in the red. What you want to do to get the right white balance is to match those peaks up, to balance the color in our images, to make sure we've got the right balance of red, green, and blue. So to do that, all you need to do is go to your temperature and tint slider and slide them over to the left or slide them over to the right, depending on if it's warm or cool, to try and match those peaks up better. So what we'll do, as you can see, all those peaks now are pretty much all matching up in the same amount. And if we go ahead and move the tint slider, we can see we're getting a better, we wanna get that peak to be basically overlaying. So every single color is pretty much the same brightness as the other. And as you can see, although I don't particularly like the white balance, 
it's correct. Now we can actually test that. Luckily, I've actually got white in this image or a neutral tone within this photo. To test that, just need to simply go to your eyedropper tool and simply click. So we'll find a value very similar. So you can see red, green, and blue is all roughly 84, 85%. We'll go ahead and click that. The white balance wasn't actually that far off to be correct. I still think it's running a little bit green here. So what I can actually do is bring that back a little bit more and get those peaks to match up. But that, I would argue, is the correct white balance. Now sure, it's not creatively what I would like to go for, but it is correct. So as a quick trick, all you need to do to find the correct white balance for your scene, make sure to match all of those peaks up in your photo. So as you can see, the histogram is majorly underutilized. I, re I use it all the time to make sure I'm not peaking, so there's no information in the highlights and shadows, as well as to make sure I've got the right exposure, but most importantly, to make sure I've got the right color in my images.